Uh, hopefully Jim is listening in to Steve's report. Uh, Jim Grant, founder, editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer, Wall Street Journal lead uh, editorial. Jerome Powell's price fix is in. Uh, every time you're on, Jim, we, we move, it seems like, further down the path to uh, sort of central bank control, uh, if you will, of the economy. Last time you were on, we didn't have much time left. And I was asking you a, a long question about what the hell to do uh, with, with the mark, stock market where it is and technology where it is and bonds where they are. And you said buy gold and silver. That was the simplest answer I think you could have given me. And that was about a month ago. And it start, it's happening already. Yes. Well, you mentioned the road we're traveling. There seems not to be much road left, Joe. Uh, the Fed is... Uh, is challenging the notion that uh, there is scarcity in the world. The Fed and the Treasury together are challenging that notion. And, um, you know, uh, supposedly, uh, according to the new regime, one can borrow indefinitely at uh, interest rates of nothing or less than nothing. It's quite a light show. And I, I, I'm, I'm still trying to acclimate myself. I think the, the rest of the world is in the same boat. But it is very new and very different. It's amazing. Uh, here's, here was my, my, my question. And actually, technically, if you look at gold since 2011, when it was challenging uh, the $2,000 mark back then, it's, it is a beautiful saucer bottom that looks like it is uh, consolidated and, and built base. It was confounding to me to try to understand why it just didn't keep going higher, because we never did turn off the spigots, really. Or, or the emergency measures, or the or the zero interest rate. We never got back to normalizing anything globally. Why? Why did it? Why didn't uh, gold move sooner? Based on all the accommodation we've seen just nonstop for the past nine years. Well, Joe, I certainly tried to encourage it. Simply didn't. One of the uh, nice things about gold is that it's both uh, dumb and uh, mute. I mean, it. it uh, Unlike the central banks who can't stop talking, gold never opens its mouth. You never know what it's thinking. And uh, those who uh, try to explain it are imputing largely their own hopes and wishes on that, uh, on that ever so quiet metal. Why didn't gold go higher? Well, um, gold is a, is a kind of a legacy monetary asset, which has something in common with bonds today that it yields nothing. In fact, uh, 14 point something or other trillion of bonds yield less than nothing worldwide. So gold in that respect is a rather high yielder. But gold historically has, uh, has competed uh, with alternative forms of money. It was a monetary asset, it competes with paper currencies, it competes with, uh, with credit, which is the promise to pay money. Ultimately, it, it competes with, uh, with interest, with, with real interest rates of which we have uh, very few, uh, almost nothing in the world is, is yielding more than a 2% rate of interest. Mm -hmm. So it's the field almost to itself uh, with regard to competition from interest. And that's a new thing. Um, gold also competes with the confidence of people in the institution of, of fiat currencies, with the managed currencies. Uh, you can think of gold as the kind of the reciprocal of the world's faith in people like your own pal. So it's one divided by confidence. And uh, so the dollar exchange rate is part of this mix. Uh, gold and silver are very, 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 very uh, you know, necessarily speculative assets. We don't have a price earnings ratio, we don't have book value. Uh, they are largely sentimental, uh, in addition to being, of course, a, a rather arithmetic competition with the aforementioned interest rates. Yeah, well. to, I, that saucer I, I, bottom was not so pretty if you were. If yeah, you got I, to I assume that gold and silver, you can't talk them into allowing central banks to do this because of COVID either. You can't say, hey, look, we're sorry, but uh, this is different. We need, to, no. we need to pull out all the stops and you need to behave yourself because uh, this is what we need to do. I mean, this is unprecedented. It's, it's been a, a long time since we had a pandemic. How does this... Uh, so I understand that gold and silver prob it probably have a bright future, but what about just in general the world? 
uh, th now that we're reaching, as you say, the end of the road in terms of, of even thinking of there's scarcity of anything, what does that look like for economies and for growth rates uh, around the world for, for GDP and, uh, and for the prospects if, if we just, you know, just where money becomes basically, uh, you know, like a, you need a, wheel, a wheelbarrow full of, of dollars to buy something, if that's what we're looking at. Well, we're, we're not, it's not quite clear what uh, rising gold price might be discounting. Uh, you mentioned uh, wheelbarrows and dollar bills, and that, of course, is one possibility. Uh, the Fed uh, insists it's a vanishingly remote possibility. That is an inflation rate significantly higher than the one they choose to aim for. But gold could also be discounting uh, the opposite. It could be discounting uh, a form of monetary disorder that is characterized by falling prices, difficulty with debts that would instigate still further central bank action. You, know, you mentioned before, Joe, the, the question about motive in the, the Fed's, why isn't uh, gold and silver not take into account the wholesome and humane motives of the, of the Fed and other central banks in trying to, in trying to prop up uh, economies will otherwise be sagging even more. And no, gold and silver take no account. It's all about outcomes. It's not about motives. It's not about, uh, uh, it's not about uh, uh, unique uh, epidemi epidemiological difficulties. Yeah. So right. this is a, a very cold-blooded business about uh, wondering where the future of is. gold and silver is saying that future is looking less good than it did a while ago. It's scary. Uh, Melissa. Yeah, Jim, it seemed like the rally in gold really took off when real yields went negative back around the March uh, equity low bottoms. And I'm, it sounds like you think that the conditions that caused that to happen, the conditions that caused gold to rally to new record, um, will remain intact. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, when you look out on the, on the radar, when you look out on the horizon, uh, is there a point at which even the conditions, even if they persist, will not? Uh, keep this rally going. Will not keep oh, sure. the you know the the price climb in gold or silver rising. Absolutely, one could imagine that. I mean, I'm as I mentioned it a few minutes ago. I was one of the people who forgot to turn bearish on gold in 2011. And Joe mentioned the gorgeous-looking saucer bottom, but that bottom, which in calendar terms lasted only nine years, to some of us in the gold bullish camp, lasted many more years than nine. And I'm here to tell you that uh, gold and silver can be most treacherous friends. They are speculative assets, and uh, the positioning has a lot to do with it. Uh, sentiment has a lot to do with it. You know, so the question is today, what else do you do with 1900 and whatever gold is, $920? Uh, is that money well, is it better placed in bonds? Well, I, I would say no. I would say that a bond is a promise to pay money. Uh, and that promise is being, I would say, debased. The Fed central bankers intend to make the currencies weaker. So I would say bonds yielding nothing are not a, a good alternative to gold. So that, in that respect, I would say that gold is, is, uh, is not overvalued. But my goodness, it's, that's a subjective view. And uh, the world can hold a different one. Uh, but uh, insofar as uh, one can see in the future, I think that field of vision is rather short, I would say that the central banks have announced their intention to keep rates low or negligible or less than negligible for years. All right. And, uh, to that extent, I think that gold has, uh, has a, a fairly bright future as a yep. speculative. Right. We see, you know, remember 10 years ago we had we have forecasts of 5,000, 10,000 an ounce. Well, you, you know, maybe it's on, it's on I, I've seen people say, given the current environment and prospects for it, that a double from here is not like totally out of, out of the question, Jim. But time will tell and we will have you, who knows, we will have you on uh, again as, as we watch this. I love listening uh, to just the, the history of fiat currencies and everything else and the way money actually works. Appreciate your time today, Jim. Uh, Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Melissa.